ladies and gentlemen. May I have your attention, please? This is not a test. We're feeling so good. I see you looking this way. We got our own move. Come on, Belden. It's a long one. Oh, Donnie crushes it to deep right field. What a catch. Vladdy Guerrero Jr. And that is out of here. Lucky, 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 lucky. I know how you like it. I've never seen anything like this in my life. Vladdy is on. Another freaking level right now. Obviously, it's a magical season. He's in the MVP conversation. We got that Hi, I'm Ben. Ben Verlander. That's me right there. And yes, if the name didn't already give it away, that's my big brother Justin, who used to wet his bed and I guess is pretty okay at baseball. Struck him out, he's got it by him. I've spent my entire life around this game, and nowadays I even get paid to talk about it on my Fox Sports Digital show. Shameless plug, flipping bats. We're heading down the stretch, things are getting intense. So that's a bit about me, but why am I here? And more importantly, why should you care? Well, the 2021 race for MLB's most valuable player has been pretty ridiculous. Possibly the best ever, a who's who of the game's brightest young superstars battling for 162 games. You've got home run hitting pitchers, sons of former MVP winners, and former MVP winners themselves all in the mix. To make sense of it all, I have two major resources to help me explain. The first is the internet. And if anything is true of 2021, it's the enormous power of social media. We're quite clearly in the digital age. And the second is my Rolodex. A bunch of smart baseball brains, including this good looking group. Former All-Star, World Series champ, and Fox Sports analyst Don Trell, the D-Train Willis. Host of the Bigs podcast, MLB analyst, and former big leaguer Xavier Scruggs. Host of FS1's Fox Bet Live, Alex Curry. And founder of John Boy Media, John Boy himself, Jimmy O'Brien. Plus, a bunch of my other friends who follow the game. You guys fired up? Dontrell, you're muted right now. We can't hear you. Dontrell, you're muted. You're <laughs> muted. Let's do this. We all know the MVP, or the most valuable player, is a big deal. Each year, it's given to only two big leaguers, one in both the National and the American League. First, the origin story. And to do that, we need to go back to 1910. This is Hugh Chalmers of Chalmers Detroit Automobile Company. Why do we care? Well, he agreed to give a car to the best player in both the American and National Leagues, based on batting average, a Model 30 to be specific. The Chalmers Award, as it was called back then, expanded in 1911 to the player who should prove himself as the most important and useful player in his club and to the league at large in point of deportment and value of services rendered. The early 1900s had a way with words, didn't they? The award only lasted until 1914. And there were a couple of other versions up until 1931, when the award as we know it was created. So how does it all work, you may ask? Let's call Ken Rosenthal. Ken, it's me, Ben. Can you hear me? You got me? Hey, Ben. What's going on? The process is conducted by the Baseball Writers Association of America. Two voters from each city and each league vote on the award. The award is voted on at the end of the regular season. So each voter lists top 10 candidates. It's a weighted point system from there. And obviously, the player with the most votes wins. Got it. But what's the criteria? Sarah, can you help me? According to baseball reference, a player in each league who has contributed the most to the success of the player's team. Hey, thanks, Sarah. Thank you, and thank you for using my copyright-free name, c so our asses don't get sued. You're welcome. Over the years, the race for the MVP has created some pretty heated drama. In 1941, Joe DiMaggio, who hit safely in 56 straight games, just edged out Ted Williams, who ended the year hitting 406. Two decades later, a pair of Yankees teammates, Mantle and Maris, battled in both 1960 and 61 with Maris taking the crown both years and breaking the Babes record, hitting 61 home runs in 61. Pushing further along through MLB history, baseball fans have been treated to a number of entertaining regular season MVP campaigns. So, a tight race is nothing new. But let's fast forward to 2021. And here we are. Ah, opening day, eternal optimism. 
hope, apple pie, hot dogs, and MVP odds. Let's start in the American League. Entering the year, the front runner was... I'm going chalk here. I'm going with Mike Trout. He's still the best player in our sport. Yes, Mike Trout is the pick. I'm going my boy, Mike Trout. You're not picking anyone but Mike Trout. It's Mike Trout, the best player in baseball. So, Mike Trout is favored by a lot of people. And why not? He's won the award three times already in his career. Trout back, it goes, it is caught! Oh, what a catch by Mike Trout! No reason to think he wouldn't dominate again. Well, Mike Trout's got three MVPs and he's coming off a hell of a season, so he should be the favorite. And somehow, some way, he figures out to get better every single season. When he's healthy, he's the best all-around player in all of baseball. MVP in the American League is... Alex Bregman. Ah, finally a new pick. Just kidding. April Fools. It's Mike Trout. Ah, you had me there. But speaking of Astros third baseman Alex Bregman... Line drive to short, there's Bregman. After Trout, Bregman had the next best odds for AL MVP. Chopper over the mound, slowly hit Bregman. And following Trout and Bregman, the other front runners going into the 2021 season were Yankees superstar and my body double, Aaron Judge. Jose Ramirez, Matt Chapman, Anthony Rendon, Jose Abreu, Yoan Mankata, Luis Robert. And rounding out the top 10, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. But early in the season, things took a turn. What happened to Mike Trout? Did he hit the bag? A little bit of a grimace as he came down the step, and then he keeps on going. Something didn't feel right for Mike Trout. Trout goes down 36 games into the season with a calf injury against the Indians. I felt the pop and started hurting pretty bad and crushed about it because obviously I just want to be out there with the guys and, you know, it is what it is. And he hasn't played since. And when he went down, across the dugout is Shohei Otani. And that's about the time we see a surge from the 27-year-old. Otani crushes it to deep right field. Good The homer was crazy. The man is crazy. And his play on the field was a massive surprise. Why, you ask? So let's go back to 2018. He won Rookie of the Year, but even then he was dealing with some elbow issues. We knew that was going to have to be addressed. Then in 2019, he has to get Tommy John surgery. He misses the rest of the season. He comes back to that short 2020 season and really was kind of a shell of who he is and who we knew he could be. You could tell he wasn't ready to come back, but we never saw Shohei Otani 100% healthy until 2021, and he put on a show. He's not only leading the league for a good chunk of the season in home runs, but then he's on the mound, striking out 10, throwing 100 miles per hour. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. He also pitches. Got it. Strike three. He got him. He's the fastest guy on the base. He has the most power. And by the way, he throws 100 miles an hour on the mound. You don't see that at all in the major leagues. Like, we've never seen anyone do it on both sides of the ball. Right now, he's hot as a firecracker. You don't see this. That's why it's so exciting to watch him. And he's leading the league in home runs. While Otani made early waves, another familiar name began to climb towards the favorites, Vladimir Guerrero. The pitch, Guerrero swings a drive to left field, deep. It is up, up and away. No, no, not him. That's the former MVP and Hall of Famer. We're talking about this guy, his son, Vlad Jr. is on another freaking level right now. Coming into the year, we knew he was a bad man, a bad young man like his father. This is a kid with a lot of potential, someone that has a lot of power and still just hadn't put it all together yet. And I think 2020 was a bit of a disappointment and he took the off season, he got into shape, he refocused. And when he started squaring up the baseball in the beginning of the season in Dunning, we knew we had a monster on our hands. I actually cannot explain how excited I am to finally see this guy. Why did you turn around for a picture, please? Go on, you got a picture with Vladdy! As the first half of the season starts wrapping up, heading into the All-Star Game in Denver, we started to see some jockeying. But this would become a two-horse race. And he crushes it! Here we go, neck and neck with a half a season to go.
time to comment. This guy, Ben Verlander, is killing it. He's so knowledgeable and so handsome. Oh, hey, you're back. Uh, <laughs> Before we move on with the 2021 MVP race, let's take a deep dive into some numbers. Which MLB player has the most MVP awards? No surprise, it's Barry Bonds with seven. Bonds won four straight MVPs, and his numbers were, let's just say, ridiculous. What's insane, though, is that no other player in MLB history has more than three MVP awards. Outfielders have combined to win 65 MVPs, with first baseman coming in second with 31. And a primary DH has never won. As for the teams, the Yankees, not surprisingly, have had 20 winners. The Cardinals, 17. And get this, the Diamondbacks, Rays, and Mets, yes, the Mets, have never won an MVP award. Ken, what does it actually take to win? Basically, number one criteria is actual value of the player, strength of offense and defense. Then there is number of games played that is considered. Also, character, disposition, loyalty, and effort, that is part of the criteria. The instructions state clearly that the winner does not need to come from a playoff qualifier in any stretch. Uh, not a division winner, not a wild card team. It can be a player from any team at all. All right, thanks, Ken. It's hard to have an MVP conversation without really diving into what an MVP actually should or could be. This is where you have to really think about the meaning of most valuable player. So are you looking at valuable as an individual player or are you looking at valuable as someone who elevates a team? You gotta think about it, not just from a hitting standpoint, you gotta think about what they're able to do defensively, defensive runs saved, how many plays are you making out there in the field? It's how impactful you are, the consistency of when you're a threat. Stats are obviously the first thing that comes to mind. You wanna put the people and the players that are at the top, right? Then I think you really have to think about what is this person doing? What is this player doing? Not only for themselves, for their team. Are they doing something different? Why are they standing out? But what's the difference maker for me is a guy that's clutch, a guy that comes in in big moments. If you have enough home runs, and if you have enough doubles, and if you have enough RBIs, listen, you can sway any voter. And if you can outright win that award. But for me, it's all about team success and how you can propel and make everybody else around you better. The stats get you into the conversation, but it's everything else around it that's going to get you the MVP. Entering 2021, it was a who's who of superstars on the rise in the National League. National superstar Juan Soto, he's the betting favorite, with Dodgers outfielder Mookie Betts and Atlanta's Ronald Acuna Jr. rounding out the top three. Other familiar names in the mix, former winners Bryce Harper and Freddie Freeman, and Padres young superstar Fernando Tatis Jr. And it seemed as though everyone had their own prediction on who would win the National League MVP. For the NL MVP, I'm picking Fernando Tatis Jr. Yeah, I'm going Mookie Betts. Juan Soto. Christian Yelch of the Milwaukee Brewers. Ronald Acuna Jr. I think Bryce Harper. Fernando Tatis Jr. I think it's going to be Freddie Freeman. But as the old saying goes, they had to play the game. Soto checks one to right. See you later. On opening day, Juan Soto hit a walk-off home run, and then he never looked back. He's the best hitter in our game, best pure hitter in our game. And to have the, the poise and the presence of mind at age 22 is incredible. Listen, he was impactful the moment that he stepped onto the field. Really, really great plate presence. He knocked 11 home runs, 42 RBI, 54 runs scored with a 283 batting average. This 22-year-old danced his way into the MVP talks. Acuna squares one up and sends one to deep right center field. Back and well gone. He's the perfect combination of speed and power. Bottom line, there's nothing that this kid can't do. That ball is belted. That ball is way out of here. Ronald Acuna Jr. started the year off red hot. In the first half of the season, he was a favorite in the NL MVP race. Hitting 24 home runs, 52 RBI, 72 runs scored, and 17 stolen bases at the All-Star break. High drive for Fernando Tatis Jr. Home run! And Nando's left the building! He's vibrant and bright, and I think a lot of new baseball fans are going to come to the sport 
solely because of him and the way he carries himself and uh, how much fun he has on the baseball field. And this is Fernando Tatis Jr.'s world! He's just setting the precedent for what's next in the game. The 22-year-old was flashy on the field and at the plate. In the first half of the year, he hit 28 home runs, 60 RBI, 67 runs scored, and had 20 stolen bases. You make it look easy, but it's not. <laughs> it's not easy, definitely not easy, but we take it a day at a time, and uh, you know, you just put that work in, and we get the results. But, and there's always a but. Each drives that toward Acuna, who leaps and can't come up with it. He lands awkwardly on the warning track. Terrible news out of Atlanta's camp, and Ronald Acuna is done for the next nine to ten months. He was putting on one of the best seasons that we would ever see. He was going to be contending for 40-40. Baseball's going to miss him. Heading for third is Fernando, and he'll be out. And he gets hurt on the play. San Diego Padres star shortstop Fernando Tatis Jr. Looks to have suffered a shoulder injury. You know, stuff like that's going to happen, but the important thing is how you're going to bounce back. It doesn't scare you to go out there again and it happening again. No. As the second half of the season started to hum, injuries to some front runners left the door open for a guy with some hardware at home to make his run. I've been telling you all year, this guy's gonna be the MVP. You know who agrees with me now? Everybody. Whoa, that guy really knows what he's talking about. Great hair, too. Take it away, Sierra. Searching Shohei Otani. I have to start with the human highlight reel the last couple of weeks. Shohei Otani. I have never seen anything like this in my life. He's a picture pitcher. This is not like a gimmick. Like, wow. Did you think he would be this good? We're looking forward to him on the mound, looking forward to him at the plate. A left-handed hitter, ran and thrower. He is insane, unreal. Even people who have done it a long time like me, this guy is electrifying to all of us. So we met Shohei Otani earlier on in the show. This guy from Japan that's somehow a dominant hitter and pitcher for the Angels. But let's stop down for a second and get a little perspective on this insane story that has women at the dentist just coming off of anesthesia, acting like this. But before the Shohei fan train left the station this summer, online, you were just as likely to find folks doubting a two-way player was possible in Major League Baseball. The question is, is he going to embarrass somebody? Is he going to be as bad as everyone says oh, he's, he's been? Awful in training. The Yankees are lucky they didn't get him. You almost have to pick one or the other. I just don't know how this thing's going to work. I don't see how in this day and age. Is it time, sadly, do you think he's a bust? Yeah, it would be considered a bust. In 2020, Shohei was coming off an injury and was, in fact, pretty bad. In his first start, he got rocked for five runs without even getting an out. And he only took the mound once more the whole season. At the plate, he hit 190 and only seven home runs. Let's compare him to Bitcoin. Call it Showcoin. 2018, when he first came over, everyone was all about him. But then Showcoin crashed big time prior to this season. Going into 2021, the more likely story was, ah man, Otani's a bust. So what actually happened is a big time historical curveball. Or in Shohei's case, a splitter. There it is. Oh my goodness. But still, there were doubters. You're going to have to pick one to focus on. This game is just a really hard game to play. When you don't have defined focus in a particular area, it becomes even more challenging. So that makes me think this year, I believe the expectations for Shohei Otani less. are much lower. Sorry, guys. The oh, internet oh never forgets. Shohei Otani is an international rock star. Shohei Otani. Shohei Otani leads the oh. league with 33 home runs. 
He has 12 stolen bases and is dominant as a pitcher. Four and one with a 3.17 ERA. Pitch, there's a swing and a miss. We have never seen a player do what Shohei Otani is doing right now in our lifetime. The key here is he is able to do both at a high level. So no one's saying, eh, I'd rather see him pitch or I'd rather see him hit. The hitting aspect is just something phenomenal. If, the, if you'd have told me that he would end up with 33 home runs for the year, I'd say pencil in MVP. Give him the MVP right now. That's how great of a year he's having. It's only the first half. By the All-Star break, Showcoin is to the moon. We have ignition. As the kids say online. All of a sudden, everyone was calling this the greatest season ever and comparing him to Babe Ruth. But is that even fair? The reason everyone is talking about Babe Ruth with Otani is because Babe Ruth, prior to being the home run king of the 1920s with the Yankees, played for Boston and started as a dominant pitcher. Ruth's most dominant years as a pitcher were in 1916 and 1917. In 16, he won 23 games with a 1.75 ERA. In 17, he won 24 games with a 2.01 ERA. But in those two years, he only hit three home runs in a combined 119 games. The Babe wasn't, initially, a force at the plate. But Babe liked hitting and he knew he could be great at it. So in the 1918 season, which was shortened by World War I and had tons of players missing because they got drafted, Ruth talked the management into letting him be an everyday player. He hit 11 home runs. It's a homer by Babe Ruth, who in those days could really run. But his pitching immediately fell off. He was only 13 and seven. Then in 1919, he slugged 29 home runs, but he was only nine and five as a pitcher. Then he goes to New York and Babe Ruth actually didn't pitch. No, he only started two games ever as a Yankee. And Babe Ruth had to stop. He wanted to become a slugger. He stopped pitching. Otani was a surprise because nobody thought it could happen. We've never seen someone do it on both sides at this level. Babe Ruth faced plumbers and sandwich makers and mechanics. It was your second job. You were exhausted coming to the park. Shohei Otani faces the world's best talent, and he is destroying the sport. Global talent at the same time. Better than Babe. And it's not close. This is why at the All-Star break, the odds had Otani as basically a lock for the AL MVP. What he was doing had never been done before, even by the babe. The question was more, is this the greatest individual season ever by a player? So let's play a game. In 2018, MLB ranked the top 40 individual seasons by a player since 1940. Would you put Otani 2021 ahead of the guys they ranked as the top five? Number five. DiMaggio hitting in 56 straight in 1941. Number four, Pedro striking out 13.2 batters per nine innings and a 2.07 ERA. Number three, it is hard to argue with Jackie Robinson and all he did for the game in 1947. But then there's the top two. At number two, Bob Gibson in 1968. Listen to these numbers. 1.12 ERA, 34 starts, 28 complete games, and 13 shutouts. I'm a black ace, and, I, and I'm really honored to just be mentioned in the same breath as this man. That's arguably the greatest season to me. I mean, to be able to go that deep in the ball games and still have the consistency and the talent to be able to do it. Listen, they lowered the mounds because of this man, and that's how impactful he was. And then there's Barry Bonds in 2004. Bonds walked 232 times that year, 120 which were intentional. He still hit 45 homers that year with an 812 slugging percentage. This guy was basically getting one pitch in every single at bat, and he had to do damage with that one pitch. The best freaking player I've ever played against. You know, it, it's one of those things where you're honored to just be on the same diamond as this guy, regardless of what he does against you. This dude was walked at one point with bases loaded to get to the next hitter because a team was willing to give up a run just so they didn't have to give up a grand slam to Barry Bonds. That's the type of impact player that you're looking for in an MVP, and Barry Bonds was the perfect example of that. So wait, could this Otani mania be overhyped? Was he a lock for the AL MVP? 
I mean, someone else did win the All-Star Game MVP. Whoa! Guerrero Jr., the youngest MVP in history. And as the second half started, bring back my guy. Vladdy is on another freaking level right now. He had everyone talking triple crown. As the NL MVP race entered the second half of the season, we started to see guys putting up video game numbers. Last we checked in on Fernando Tatis, the Padres star was battling injuries, but still had the best odds to win the MVP coming out of the All-Star break. But that's kind of boring. We gotta spice this up. Thank you, Bryce Harper. Harper came out of nowhere in August to make his case. And then there's Juan Soto whose second half explosion made this a three-horse race. Soto crushes this one, it's an it's long, long gone. Sarah Langs, an awesome Twitter follow and MLB writer, helped break these down. Juan Soto, the best hitter in baseball, led the majors in on-base percentage for the second straight year, and he's just 22 years old. Only one other player in Major League history has led the majors in on-base percentage twice before turning 23, and it was Hall of Famer Ted Williams. Oh, and it's oh. out of here. Juan Soto, he's the best hitter in our game. He lets the ball get deep and has an extremely short swing. He can take you out left field, center field, right field. The toughest out in our game. He's the best pure hitter in all of baseball. <laughs> I mean, this is how pure this guy is. He's gonna be a star that's gonna be around for a very, very long time and he's fun to watch. I'm wearing my Washington Nationals lid today because I wanna talk about Juan Soto. Isn't it possible he wins the MVP? Yes. His second half is the stuff of legend. We have not seen these numbers since Barry Bonds. What Soto has been doing as of late, and, and pretty much ever since the second half, has been not only special but electric, and we're only seeing a little bit of the mercs of this guy. He's only 22 years old. Well, this is just <laughs> the beginning for what Soto is about to do. We've talked about him a bit here and there. Bryce Harper. What can you say about Bryce Harper? Let's go back a bit. We started hearing about Bryce Harper when he was like 17, hitting bombs in the desert at the College of Southern Nevada. Went number one in the draft to the Nationals. With the first selection, Bryce Harper. It's, it's what I've wanted since I was seven years old, and I just want to make it, and uh, we'll see what happens when I get there. And then in 2015, he just exploded. He hit 330, 42 home runs, 99 RBI, scored 118 runs with an on-base percentage of 460. Oh, and yeah, won the MVP that year. Our MVP, Bryce Harper! A few years later in 2019, Bryce Harper got paid. 13 years, $330 million deal with the Phillies. But the numbers dropped. Swing and a miss. The 3 2 to Harper. And he struck him out. And when you're getting paid and the numbers drop, you get this. Bryce Harper. Yeah, you know where he's going. Overrated, baby. He is undoubtedly the most overrated player in baseball. No. All I've been hearing all year long Bryce Harper's overrated. Bryce Harper's not worth $330 million. Overrated. Hey, Bryce, how's it feel to be the most overrated player in the history of baseball? That's a clown question, bro. But in the second half of 2021, Bryce Harper was back to being Bryce Harper. Out to center field. Nimmo's going back. That one is gone! Off the back wall! Bryce Harper is getting hot at the right time. This is what you need. You want to heat up towards the end of the year. What's it like to hear people chanting MVP, MVP? after that home run. Feels good, uh, but you know, we got, we got a while to go. He's quietly put himself in a discussion for MVP. Are we so sure that he hasn't wrestled the NL MVP away from Fernando Tatis Jr.? That's gonna be a long way gone! 
So what do we know? Soto and Harper have closed the gap on Tatis. But what has Tatis been up to? Sarah, give the people the numbers. Can you believe that Fernando Tatis Jr. is just 22 years old? We've seen such an outstanding start to his career, and it was all on display in 2021. Even though he missed some time due to injury, he set some records, including the most home runs by any player in his first 100 games of his season at 22 or younger. He hit 36 home runs in those first 100 games. Nobody else had ever hit more than 34. He's a generational talent, had an MVP-worthy season for sure. The power, the flair, the swagger, the joy of the game. This is great for the game of baseball. Fernando drives one to center field. This back. Third home run of the night for Fernando. Tatis is the most electrifying guy in the sport. He's one of those guys that you just can't take your eyes off of. Spectacular catch. Caught by Fernando. You cannot do it. Better than that. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> I love Fernando Tatis Jr. He brings a certain energy and playfulness and just fun to the game, and it's what baseball needs right now. For a long time, this game has been stale, stale in culture, stale in development. But this is a guy that's the prime example of what our game should start to look like more versatile players that can do so much on the field. I don't think you understand. I'm obsessed. Who isn't? Because the obsession is well founded. Quick stop down before we move on. Just want to make sure we all appreciate how good these young players are. Lauren, all yours. I remember when guys would debut and they'd be shaken in their boots because they were facing Max Scherzer or Adam Wainwright with Yachty behind the plate. Guys they grew up with posters on their wall of. Not anymore. Game has changed. Juan Soto, Fernando Tatis fighting for an MVP. They're 22 years old. They come to the plate with the body language of, you should be worried about me. It's a young man's game and these guys have taken it next level. This is a tight one. The three young megastars battled it out as the season winds down. Dude, I've been like going back and forth on this thing. I have, I have, I, have, I don't have an answer for this question. I have no idea who I'm voting for. <laughs> it's too close to call. How about that? This one's legitimately tough for me. Their numbers are so close. I'm honestly torn. Oh, don't put this evil on me, Ricky Bobby. And then on September 20th, with about 15 games to go, Bryce Harper takes the lead. But can he hang on? for MVP. Early in September, the storyline in the American League MVP race was pretty basic. It was all about slugger and star pitcher Shohei Otani. And the brightest mind in all of baseball was all over it. If you go to Fox Bet, Shohei Otani is minus 5,000 to win the AL MVP. The next closest player is Vladimir Guerrero Jr. at plus 2,000. When I tweeted this, he was plus 1,500. He's now plus 2,000. This is happening, my friends. It's over. Book it. But fast forward just two weeks. You gotta talk right now about AL MVP. The AL MVP race has taken a strange couple of turns the last couple of weeks. Vlad Jr. is my MVP. 100%. Shohei Atani is literally garbage. He's not the MVP. So what the heck happened? You know, the argument against Otani of the last month, the strikeouts have started to rack up, uh, the power numbers have started to come down. People go through slumps, and again, he's he's got to go through slumps two different ways. Uh, a lot of people that are doubters and haters are probably getting excited again. Told you he couldn't keep it up all season. Shohei Atani, 258, really? I know hacks on the Cubs hitting 258, buddy. Literally garbage. Okay, bro. Let's calm down a bit. 
And if the Angels are out of it, and if you are of that thought process, uh, what Vladdy and the Blue Jays were doing in the second half, they were winning, and they were getting back into the race, and they were having a lot of fun. Don't look now. The Toronto Blue Jays are making a run. And the man who is leading them is none other than Vladimir Guerrero Jr. In September, he was just dumb. And on September 13th, not only does he take over the home run lead from Otani, in the same hit, he tops the most homers his Hall of Fame dad ever had in a season. Step aside, Vlad Sr. Junior with number 45. The main hook that everyone was hanging the new Vlad argument on was the fact that the Triple Crown was back within striking distance. Let's dig into the Triple Crown. In baseball, a player earns a batting Triple Crown when he leads the league in batting average, home runs, and RBIs over the same season. A Vladdy Jr. who's flirting with the Triple Crown, which is so rare. We haven't seen it since 2012 when Miguel Cabrera won it. Before Miggy, you have to go back to Carl Yastrzemski and Frank Robinson, who did it in back-to-back -back seasons in 1967 and 66. Before them, Mickey Mantle did it in 1956. And if you're wondering, yes, all those guys also won the MVP. <laughs> Listen to the chance of MVP. Uh, I think Guerrero should win the MVP myself. Now, uh, you're going to tell me not because of the Otani pitching. Otani hasn't done anything in, a, in about a month. I know they're giving it to him anyway. It's a done deal, but. It's gargantuan the mistake. Guerrero's season is better. Let's stop with this nonsense because everybody's just so fascinated with Otani pitching and hitting home runs. The MVP of the American League, without a doubt, not even a shred of doubt, is Guerrero. I, I appreciate Shohei, but it's a novelty act. Otani's batting 259. Vlad Jr.'s batting 321. There's a huge difference between those two numbers. And Otani's a third starter. Stop it. He ain't the ace. I believe that voters will look at that, and when you look at the most valuable player, it's someone that really can propel your organization into success. So are you looking at valuable as an individual player, or are you looking at valuable as someone who elevates a team? And you can really go both ways. Honestly, it takes us right back to where we started. What does the MVP mean? And what are the most important factors voters should consider? Should the fact that Vlad and the Blue Jays are fighting for a wild card spot count for him in the MVP voting? Or should the fact that his team is good because there are other great players on the team count against him? Should Shohei get a point because Mike Trout's been hurt and teams have just been pitching around him in the second half of the season? I mean, he's been a one-man show. Sorry about that. The 2021 regular season is over. It's finished. The players have made their cases, and so have the millions of fans around the world, as to who they think should win MVP. For National League MVP, I'm giving it to Fernando Tatis. He is one of the most electrifying young players in baseball right now. He's so good for the- All right, guys, let's do this. It's time, MVP pick. Let's start in the AL. Cool. Okay. Ready, let's go. Before we give our final thoughts, a quick recap. In the AL, Vlad Jr. definitely made it interesting, finishing with just insane numbers. Listen to these, and these are across both leagues. Tied for first with 48 home runs, sixth with 111 RBI, fourth in average finishing at 311, and third in baseball with 188 hits. Damn. You're probably sick of me talking about him, but Shohei Otani, who started the year well off the board, took a hold of the best odds to win in July. And really, he never looked back. He finished, get this, 46 home runs, 100 RBI, stole 26 bags, won nine games on the mound with a 3.18 ERA. Just wow. 
Otani crushes it. This one to left field. This one is gone. Wow. So let's do it. Who's your AL MVP? I think Shohei Otani 100% should be the AL MVP. He is consistent, he is a powerhouse, and he needs to be the AL MVP. That sucks for Vladdy, but American League MVP is going to Shohei Otani. Just to see how dominating he was on the mound and at the play, I think Shohei is going to edge him out and win it. He had the most value that any player has had in our sport. We may never see this ever again. This is a special time, a special player, and a special moment in 2021. Shohei Otani is the AL MVP. In the NL, and this one is tough, Juan Soto had the best odds entering the year and finished leading baseball with 465 on on-base percentage with 145 walks. He also finished third in average, batting 313. MVP. Who's playing better than Juan Soto right now? Nobody. But could this be Fernando Tatis's year? Despite a nagging shoulder injury, the 22-year-old led the NL with 46 home runs and added 25 stolen bases. Every little thing that he does, trying to get those MVP votes. Then there's Philly star Bryce Harper. Harper finished first in OPS, batted 3.06, 35 home runs, and did finish with the best odds to win the award at minus 200. And that oh, one is close, deep to right field. Forget about it. Just incredible what this man has done in the second half. Time for your NL picks. Wow, my pick in the NL. Oh, man. NL MVP? I'm honestly torn with the NL MVP. Oh, don't put this evil on me, Ricky Bobby. This one is legitimately tough for me. Tatis had such an incredible start to the season, obviously had a couple injuries along the way, but Bryce Harper is trending. Bryce is right there, but I'm still gonna stay with Tatis Jr. just because the season has been magical, hitting 40 home runs and stealing 20 plus backs. I have no idea. I think we're gonna get a close vote. I think Harper and Soto are neck and neck. I have to go with Bryce Harper. It's been impressive to watch the way he's gone about it offensively, defensively, base running. He impacts the game every single day. Am I picking right now? Am I just gonna pick right now? Um, I'm gonna go with Bryce Harper. Whew, tough one. All right, guys, thanks so much. Yeah, all right, thanks guys, for we'll having see you me. later. Bye. Take it easy. Dontrell, you're muted again. I, I messed that up. Who knows how this will all end up? But what I do know is that the game is in good hands. And it's good to see it evolve. Change is good for the game, always has been. It's exciting, flashy. We're seeing things we've never seen before. And one thing's for sure, this young, modern group of superstars are ready to write their chapter in the storied history of baseball. And there's value in that. Oh, Donnie crushes it to deep right. And that is out of here. Oh, what a play! Bring it in drive, deep to center field.